Farm my lane, I go second item satanic. I stand in front, I just anchor smash a wave and back up. But very much OG. They are dead. Many one. creeps here, so they need to fall back a little bit. And now in the top lane, Misha, he already rotated. Yeah, but Good body like, blocks. He's trying to get back to his tower, but it's not going to happen. First blood goes the way of Yuragi, and now Boxy decides to show up top after the first blood attempt. PC Thor and uh, today already Misha in trouble. Has Fairy Fire. Going to pop it. Rebound. Still going to go not up down. Not for one more second, and he goes down. Yeah, I think in that situation it's uh, much better to keep the Fairy Fire because you're dead anyway. He did have healing cell, but uh, Boxy had his... And Insania. Abilities available That's anyway. Fairy fire That's a good right fairy. There, Tiger. It's not cool. Mars has two names. Wait, what's the second name? Ares. Oh, that's true. See, look, the, the, the Zeus the God isn't cutting it right now, even with the Heavenly Jump. And Insania, I must say, has been doing a pretty good job in bullying. Jakiro, I find his strengths are more shard rotation. Oh, Amar, there's the ice pad bottom. They're gonna get another one. And he gets the kill on Tide Under. Meanwhile, mid, they get a roar onto Puck. Quick jaunt, bottles up. Will he get the root? Eldoge. Eldoge does not get the root. And a resummon as well. Meanwhile, dispose onto Boxy. He's gonna have to hammer out. Misha in trouble. And he gets the root. There we go. Inside the fire, rebounds out. And he's fine. Sustainable heroes, yes, Mickey. Oh, let's see the hook from Yuragi. Ravage used on top of the waveform. Hood dissipates a lot of that damage, and he's walking away slow from the heavenly jump, and that's too much burst before Insania can come in. All he had was nice bad. But meanwhile, BZM getting chased to tier two. A lot of armor underneath that tier two, but not he's a lot of get magic it. reduction. Rook carry is lone druid. Pudge is just there, you know, existing. Box against the deny. He has Solar Guardian if he wants to get out, but the adaptive strike cancels it. And he will give up his life. Okay, so true carry is lone druid, but you did mention on the panel though that the carry to carry. I say a lot of. Now Liquid systematically taking control of this OG jungle. Rebound in, get the dispose onto Mickey, but he's very, very tanky. He gets the hook onto Amar. Ice path on top of it, as well as the macro pyre. Amar looking for a oh, ravage. Oh, great macro. Locks it all down, and Amar just doesn't see the opening anymore. Root onto the puck as well. There's the Ravage. Stuns out everyone. No follow-up. Dream Coil. Sai has BKB coming to him. He's got it delivered. He pops it immediately. He's going to get out of the coil. Walks away. A hook from downtown onto the Tidehunter. Mickey snaps up that kill. Tidehunter's dead. The Zeus is dead. BZM on the run. He gets... The Puck makes a move, gets hooked by Mickey. That's seven and two, gets the phase shift off. May spawn into an ice path, into a dismember. Not enough damage quite yet, but the macro pyre is just enough to put Puck six feet under. Roche has still not been claimed yet. Instead, Matu changes his mind, ravages up, but Amar really doesn't want to have to blow it now. Starbreaker gets canceled. Amar finally has to ravage, and Matu loses his bear. Not gonna have it. Oh, he just resummons it. Boxy goes down. Misha. Getting hit by a oh, Morphling. Storm. And what an ice bath from Insania. Follow up with the Savage Roar Fear. Morphling not able to attribute shift. They're going to go back to Roche Pit and take it. The great initiative. Apprehensive picking a Tidehunter knowing that you will be slower than usual. But the fact that they have like not crossed the river on their terms in like 15 minutes. They see Taiga. They eat Taiga. They kill Taiga. Meanwhile, Amar, Solar Guardian, stun. Not going to come in time. Nicely done by Amar. Yeah. They, have, N they have a really good scaling lineup yeah. inside of Liquid. Hook, Yuragi, stunned by the Ice Path. He gets the attribute shift, immediate blink. Ravage from the Tidehunter cancels a lot of the aggression, but everyone's just trying to retreat. Macropire goes down, a weird triangle uh, plasma field. That was peculiar. And Another one. Uh, no, Ooh. the combo finally ends. Mickey whiffs it, but it's only on his Zeus. It wouldn't have been that much. And they save the Morphling, but it costs so much. Look at the Tania. He's on this puck's tail. Dawnbreaker's gonna show up too, but BZM's not quite afraid. Not yet. Enter Zai. Enter the ice path. He gets the blink facing the right way. <laughs> gets the dream coil and jaunts away. Meanwhile, Matamba Man gets the kill on Misha. But uh, I believe they could, like, if they initiate with the blink hex, you know that there needs to be Ravage mm -hmm. thrown down. And, and it event. might not be a good Ravage. Okay. That's the hex reveal. That's yeah, the really. hex reveal. Down goes Puck out of the game for 50 seconds, and they already baited out the glyph earlier. 50 seconds left on OG's glyph, which means they may be able to claim a Rax if they're feeling confident. 
Thunder God's Wrath. They see Mickey, activates BKB, gets the dismember off, sticks around. Stolar Guardian is not up, so he's not gonna have any backup, at least not from Dawnbreaker, but Zai jumps in, blinks in, throws a party. And they, they call it. Is yeah, called. I mean, they're, they're just getting haunt, <laughs> oh haunted. Mickey, he looks pretty. Uh, what's the life stealer's responsibility here? Because I don't feel like rage is that critical compared to. Boys, Zeus always does an abundance of damage. And you have the follow up of, I think, Mars just he gets to play a hero he's very comfortable in. And he's just had a, a shaky three games in the last you know, series in this. Yeah, Boxy is dead. Oh. And by the way, he didn't skill anything that was just space for Taiga in this. Top lane, but or the bottom lane, but Life Stealer as a hero this game, and we've had a lot of discussions about him as Boxy looking to get the Jingo stacks up. He's going to be successful, but he's going to get pinned to a tree and brought down. That feels really bad for Boxy. That's 0 and 2 now. Voice for its game's going. How good does Zeus game? Can he lean on his team, or does he need to be the real carry in the game? Right. And the question is, is, is he going to be able to st or stay in this lane as Boxy again will drop in all likelihood? Gets up the balance strike. Trying to deny himself the creeps, but Amar gets credit for his second kill of the game. It's a much better start this time around for OG as Matu. He's getting quite low. It's going to talk about the fact that he's getting close to his Vanguard. But you start getting a bit more under tab. But they've never made that aggressive play, so it has just been more of like a balance of farm between the two of them. All right. And now Lifestealer, he's going to be very happy to be in this lane. Can't really get pushed out too much. Can't yeah, but go turn his knife onto Matu, trying to get his back. In that area, but Yuragi and company able to take out Matu again. We're going to see the first arena of the game from Amar. It's off the rebuke. DM is showing himself. He's still in Viz, though. Mortimus kisses are coming. He's going to get stunned out, though. And the Thunder God's Wrath to follow as Zai getting extremely low, focusing on Amar. But in the meantime, they might be able to find Mickey on top of this. So OG going to get two valuable kills. As Mickey trying to maneuver a bit around. Gets a nice avalanche to try to turn this around at Amar, but it's not going to happen. So two for nothing. You know, Liquid trying to utilize Mickey in that bot lane, but BZM had that invis rune, so he TP. If he completes the Vlad still at some point in the game, like we have seen Mars before go Wraith pack just. Oh, Amar, there's the initiation from Liquid. He's horribly outnumbered. They're even going to expand the Wukong's command, which ends shortly after, but. And so this is life. And that's probably why he wants to be Kibi first, right? Less about the team, more about yeah. his survivability. But again, I'm I'm not opposed to see him actually complete that later down the line, like I mentioned. But oh. uh, Liquid, they get one kill. You know you have numbers advantage. You sweep wow. the map, you find more. Okay. And mix lot. If they get top eight and get additional points, mm. it further secures their potential chance. Oh, we're going to see the infest bomb. And Sandy gets a four step, so we'll be taken out shortly after the astral step. Mickey already super low inside that macro pyre, as you see. Lifestealer starting to pound upon him. He gets tossed away, and Mickey will actually live for now. But there's the arena from Amar keeping Matu at bay. Has to spear him away as OG have already lost two. Again, they're going against this Aegis, so they have to be careful. But there's the open wounds, but Foxy keeping his space, so Yuragi can't heal up to a high degree here. And he's going to get bursted down as a result. So three dead for OG. And you can see... BZM now. He has a Dissimilate available. Astral Step up in three seconds. We'll see if that's enough to get him to his base. It looks like he will be fine. And we'll see if that makes a difference here. Is they're going to try to get the jump onto Zai, knowing that the Belch is very powerful indeed. But Mickey's the one that they're going to set their sights on. Arena is placed. And it looks like Tiny's going to get bursted down if he's not careful. Trying to limp away, but he does drop in the end. But the Mortimer's Kiss is doing quite a bit of damage. Yuragi. Oh, it's the stun by the cookie, and Zai is taking out everybody along with Matu, and he gets belched on. Belched. Already in the middle of the fight, it's very easy for you to, to group up. Oh my god, <laughs> one hit, BCM is so Ooh. low. Oh my goodness, Mickey, he's gonna use that. Oh my god, the tree volley is enough. There it is. And BZM is dead. As you see, Roshan getting involved as the Belch will not connect as Mickey is now on the high ground, but Amar gets off his arena with the BKB activated, but Matu is going to have no problem beating him down despite that passive game. Okay, he's actually going to live for a little bit, but then die shortly after. So now, as you can see, Tiny now has a BKB. Taiga getting jumped. That is the... Oh my god! Boundless strike into literally one shot by Matu. He has 10 Warpath stacks, with, I he assume, the 25 one, town. All right, he took 1,191 damage <laughs> in one hit. <laughs> well, Mickey gets caught inside this arena. The Cookie's going to give him a little bit of space there. And he's actually going to tree toss on top of Amar. And there comes the BKB Matu. They delete him like he has no items at all. And Taiga getting chased. Cookie is there, not even needed. So two dead with no buyback. And it's a 5v3 as the Aegis is... OG. 
to refine some of their form, or at least their approach to how they enter some of these drafts to unlock Amar, if he can't get one of the big three heroes that he plays. And we can see Liquid. Oh, that's gonna connect a two-shot, three-shot with the Abyssal being used. And BZM is done. Could be for the entire match. We'll see how it goes. Taiga, cheeky little TP there. Amar, the bash? The bash? Ah, okay. Not gonna get the proc. And we can see Roche is up in 14 seconds. Helps he had Blast Rick there. Came in clutch to help. Oh, uh, that's the true. Yeah. And down mid they go. Uh, they're going to probably... I thought they are going to have a Courier Scout Roche, but maybe not going to bother here. Silver Edge is there for Yoragi. And Voice for his buyback is on cooldown, so they were very looking well aware of it. I know that's oh, going to be up. He was looking for the break, but <laughs> he gets tossed away as Matu kills another support. This time it's Taiga. Focusing a little bit on Amar. You can see the tree volley come out, but the Wukong come out. That was a huge explosion in mid-air. The Infest Bomb looks hilarious, as it doesn't matter because GG's called. 31k lead at the end of this game as Liquid have uh, shellacked OG. Right.